Joining me now on the show is the programme director of the World Architecture Festival, Paul Finch. Paul, it's a subject that you would imagine we should have been looking at for the past two decades, considering how much people are banged on about climate change. But how do we design our towns and cities better so we can cope with heat waves like this? I think it's a huge, huge question. And of course, the first thing you would do is look at countries and climates, which are generally more extreme than ours. I mean, we're not going to have months and months of 40 degree temperatures. But as the mayor of London said, we may have to get accustomed to more frequent um, heat waves. Well, how do they cope? How do they run trains in Saudi Arabia? Um, how do they have people walking about the middle of uh, Dubai or uh, Oman? How do you provide natural shade? What can you exploit from nature? And what can you learn uh, from other cultures? And the answer to that is uh, quite a lot. And I think this has to be seen in the context of how do you mitigate against uh, extreme temperatures for small periods of time during the year? Because it doesn't matter how good we are uh, at doing zero carbon development, and we should be doing that. Uh, but of course, unless everyone in the world's doing it, um, the climate's still going to heat up. So it's not as though if we all behave perfectly as individuals, that will solve the problem. We're still going to have a problem and therefore we need to look at that collectively. Now, at a sort of local level, sorry. No, no, carry on, do carry on. Well, I was going to say an obvious example is, uh, I mean, traditionally in British houses, they've been designed more to keep heat in um, rather than um, keep the heat out. So, for example, we put kind of blinds on the inside of our windows. But if you go to Spain or Italy um, or, or, or France, you find that they put um, shutters on the outside of the windows, which, of course, is much more effective in keeping heat out. Um, with our sort of climate, it doesn't make an awful lot of sense to invest in air conditioning when the number of times a year we'd really need to use it is fairly limited. The alternative is to try to exploit um, what the Victorians and Edwardians would do in their houses, which is flows of air. I mean, when we brick up chimneys, we forget that we're actually doing something to the way that the air flows through a building. If we build apartment blocks where they're called single aspects, so there's only one window, we're placing far greater reliance on um, mechanical systems to revive ventilation rather than opening windows so that you get a breeze running through the apartment uh, or through the house. So those practical things, I think we just need to have a close look at. But I think in the medium to longer term, there are other ways in which we can organize our cities, which will make a big difference. For example, I've been looking at projects from around the world that have entered the World Architecture Festival Awards program this year. And some of these are really intriguing. You know, I'm looking at, for example, the biggest projects in Canada at the moment is the reworking of somewhere called the Downsview uh, Airport, where they're kind of greening the whole thing out um, they're putting buildings up which incorporate natural shade. They're using a lot of timber for the structure. Over in China, they're going one step further. They are deliberately uh, removing buildings that get in the way of natural flows of cool air going from sort of lake districts uh, out to the sea. In Singapore, they've been computer modeling how you get flows of air between buildings. And sometimes tall buildings can help to create these air flows. Sometimes it's too much at the base, as we all know, but sometimes it's really useful because cool moving air will, for example, um, stop malaria developing in stagnant pools of water. In Doha, the Mushareb project, designed, master planned by British architects, Allies and Morrison, have incorporated a whole series of overhangs, colonnades, walking routes, so that even in very hot conditions, you notice the difference in temperature when you go into uh, shadier spaces. So there are things we can do. We shouldn't give up. But we've got to think about mitigation, I think, as yeah. well as the zero carbon story.